last episode on sailing Millennial Falcon. After more than six months of hauling anchor by hand, we finally got to install our new windlass. After a few hiccups, she was in and working. However, we hit a small snag on our test voyage that was ultimately fixed through the use of a cheap bow roller. So Kiara wanted me to take uh, take the opportunity for this lovely flat weather and lovely sunshine to take a photo of her diving off the boat. <laughs> I'll splice in the photo that we got as a result. <laughs> Somebody's not yet capable at clearing railing when she dives off the boat because she, I don't, you, you know what, you tell them what happened. Who did show the photo of this guy? What happened? <laughs> I was diving in all, all trying to be elegant like and then my arm caught around the railing and my face planted like to the stage where it actually hurt my face diving in and I had him caught it all on camera. <laughs> I can't get More up the diving practice for you. <laughs> can I see? Yeah. Alright, Ads, are you going to show us what, uh, what you can do instead, huh? Oh, really? Yeah. Alright. Hands clear of the railing. <laughs> Watching Kiara. We don't, we don't begin our dive like this. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You are just as competent <laughs> as I am in diving. Very good, yeah. try the pull-up uh, option. Uh, I get this far, but then I... <laughs> uh, 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 oh, yes! It's <laughs> a long climb. Oh, <sighs> what is that plan for the day? I don't know, it's in flux. Today was going to be a... Put in the new water pump day, but it's such a lovely day that... Might be a nice day to go and explore. And apparently there is a... The man who owns this Corbin behind us. He's a, uh, a famous author. Oh. I think it's Stephen Korshek. He wrote, I uh, can't remember, they've arranged sundowners with him tonight and we're invited, so. Cool. Could have some fun stories. I'll have to check Does out his- Do you know that we're invited? Or I don't know, <laughs> no way. It, could be on, it could be on Moose or it could be on, we'll have some oh, fun stories. Let's go to sundowners just for a change. <laughs> no, I just want to get sailing again. We put all this love into the boat and I want to, I want to try out our new main sheet. Oh, our new main sheet, check it out. Yeah. yeah. So this, previously we had this, uh, these. So two instead of three. And um, these cleats would get really badly stuck under the pressure because the pressure was so high. And a couple of times we got, you know, like some compression winds off a hillside, you know, up from 27 to 38, I think was the worst case. And I had to actually hammer it out of the cleat with a winch handle screaming and yelling, trying to get the main sheet off, which is not something, it's just not safe. Um, and then when you do finally get it off, it just goes flying and when you try to stop it, you lose a fair bit of bark off your hands. Um, so we've gone, we've upgraded and all the sheaves were shot to hell anyway. This one's not too bad, but the top sheave, the top sheave was uh, any day now was just gonna get trashed. So we've upgraded to a three, three turning block and it is infinitely better. Like the sheaves are all smooth, it's a larger set of sheaves, the cleat is a lot smoother, and obviously the pressure reduction is going to be significant. So I want to put this bad boy under some pressure and see how she goes. Yeah, Testing we had to this. Google how the hell to, uh, oh, to actually yeah. wire yeah. it up. That took some doing. Line it, up. it was hard. Yeah, we got, got it done there. Looking good. All right, friends, we have a, uh, a visitor coming, so we've got to love you and leave you. It was around this time, being surrounded by other boats and friends who were venturing further afield to Europe, that we started thinking about our future plans. After speaking at length about it, we wanted to push ourselves and decided that we'd start preparing as much as we could to attempt an Atlantic crossing too in the coming months. Knowing Millie's temperament, however, we knew that just because we were keen to go didn't mean that she was. Yes, it might sound silly that we think our boat gets a deciding vote in our future plans, but our past experience has told us that Millie always has the final say. So we started a list of what we thought we would need to get us into shape to cross an ocean. The proviso was that if we managed to get through the list, then we'd attempt to cross. If we didn't, then there was no harm, no foul, and we'd get a better boat out of it in the end. 
We knew we had our work cut out for us to get Millie into shape, and having met lots of new friends in St Martin, we called in the big guns. Enter John Kretschmer. John has a sailing CV that would give Lucky Jack Aubrey a run for his money. It boasts more than 300,000 miles, including 26 Atlantic crossings, on more than 49 different boats, including 3,000 miles in a town of 42. In addition to some 97 boat reviews for various sailing magazines, John has written seven books chronicling his many voyages and the vast experience gained over three decades. As if all of that wasn't enough, John and his wife Taji run training passages and workshops aboard their current yacht and home, Quetzal, throughout the year. How was the meeting with the great that, John? Yeah, that was really enlightening. There was just... Um, it's really nice to hear someone who's you know, done 300,000 miles and in a plethora of boats um, sort of have, a, have reached similar conclusions as, as I've made um, and, and also uh, nice to get a feel of their, how they gauge the severity of all the little things that like keep me up at night, you know, all those little niggling things that you worry about and then you, you talk to someone who you, whose opinion you really can't trust. Um, like if you can't, if you can't believe this guy then who can you believe? Um, it's nice when they're like, ah, I wouldn't even worry about that, don't, don't even, you know, and, and they sort of reason you through it and you're like, yeah, I guess deep down I kind of knew that, but I just needed someone to tell me, uh, you know, you just need someone to tell you that everything's okay, uh, even though deep yeah. down you know it, you just need yeah. somebody that you're like, it's fine, yeah. you're fine. You've, you're doing it. You're doing it the right way. You're fine. And then uh, he made some commentary on uh, just cutter sailing and rigging and sort of sail handling tactics and uh, storm handling tactics. Yeah, he was really, really impressed with the deck, which was nice. Uh, to and totally happy with the uh, the state of the, the bilge and the rigging. He doesn't like the um, these closed off turnbuckles that we have uh, um, and I suspect and, and he suspects that they're uh, probably original so I, I, I dare say we'll do away with them. Yeah generally it was just a great review like he, he thought really highly of the boat and he was quite happy like quite impressed and happy with what we have, have done with it and he's like you know this boat will take you anywhere which is what we want to hear because it's sort of why we bought it and why we've been working so hard. Um, so yeah just a really cool it's just, I feel better. I just feel better about everything. It's like a weight off my shoulders. And he is absolutely, him and his wife are absolutely wonderful, lovely, lovely people. You just, you, I don't even think he could say anything bad about anyone or any boat. He would just like wrap it up in a bundle of, of positivity. So um, yeah, he, uh, he has lots of books out and um, I'm so, so keen to now read a lot more of them. So about a week after Adam and uh, our friend Kenny did the did all the rigging and tightened everything up and made sure all of our shrouds were nice and tight, changed the backstay too with some Starlock, we've decided to cross an ocean and therefore the rigging needs to be readdressed apparently. Um, and we are now measuring up for some new rigging. Um, so we've decided to get it done here before we leave and so therefore Adam is up the mast and measuring everything pretty much <laughs> every single thing these guys want to know that's what Adam needs to measure well it's not straight to measure it's it's drilled down into a, an exponential curve yeah I, I get what you mean so uh, longitudinally it's it's not flat my love what is your plan today um, today um, I need to measure out we took some line measurements for the rigging um, yesterday or the day before. I need to measure them out properly, properly um, and get some get some concrete lengths to send off to Brooks, uh, a rigger that our uh, mate John Kreshner put us in touch with. Um, we're toying with the notion of crossing the Atlantic in May, uh, and I'd like to beef up the rigging or just replace a few parts that are, well, pretty much replace anything that I'm suspect on. So at this stage, that's a backstay. I'm gonna put Starlock fittings on all of the bottom swages because there's, uh, I think, three spots that I'm a little bit suspect on. Um, uh, I went aloft day before yesterday or to do the measurements that I spoke about a minute ago. It looked fine. I didn't see any cause for concern uh, other than a um, just shy, just on the underside of the swage point for this baby stay. Um, the, the 
the wire is, is gone, it's corroded through, or it's almost like someone's taken a hacksaw to it and got bored halfway. Um, so we're gonna obviously replace that, and I'm gonna uh, put a star lock on the bottom of that as well. I'm gonna get five new turnbuckles. We have these enclosed turnbuckles on the, the rear lower shrouds and the intermediaries, and I don't like that I can't see inside them, so I'm gonna put new turnbuckles on there. Um, anyway, long story short, I plan to overhaul the rigging completely uh, at some stage. For now, I just want to beef it up and make myself feel comfortable and confident um, and remove any suspicion of doubt that I might have. That doesn't at all answer your question about what I'm going to do today. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do today... Five minutes. You know what, I had a timer on this camera? Yeah. You've been going on for five minutes. So, what I'm going to do today... <laughs> today's job, I'm going to get stay, uh, the baby stay down and do the measurements of... Uh, or get the correct measurements from what we took uh, the other day. I'm afraid to keep talking because Kiara's looking at me. Really, I'm really looking angry. through the I'm giving you evil eyes. Yeah, I know you are. I can so feel them through them. the lens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> comparison time. We've gone to pretty much all of the rigging shops, marine shops, channelries, etc, etc, looking for Starlock fittings. And we've managed to find some pretty good cheap ones at the riggers. And now we're just trying to find the rest in an actual channelry. So we've gone around lots today and uh, we've been pretty productive. We reckon that we should be able to get this rigging, we we'll definitely should be getting able to get this rigging sorted before we go. Yeah! Guess who's getting stuff done? I tell you what, bizarre, we are. super weird. Like we got, we're getting, so we've I haven't told this story yet. I plan to do it when I did the work, but we met, I have told told you guys thus far that we met John Kreshner, who's just the coolest dude ever. Uh, and he was kind enough to put us in touch with a rigger back in, uh, back stateside uh, named Brooks. And I'll put his um, his details in the, in the blurb and possibly where I'm waving this thing now, uh, because he's been super helpful and taken all my calls and answered all my questions. Um, but we've been pricing up the parts locally just odds and ends and secondhand star locks, so we just have to buy the new cones. And we're actually coming up like cheaper, if not equal, by the time you factor yeah. in shipping and time lost, uh, with just local odds and ends that we can get. So we've got like a fistful of turnbuckles and star locks, which is half the work I wanted to do. Um, we got a new baby stay made up for like probably $20 more than it would have cost us to ship it in before shipping So we broke even there and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's coming together really yeah. well and quickly too Like I expected at least two to three weeks of shipping time for all this stuff and it's like Adam's just said Okay, well, we'll borrow Kenny, yeah, borrow we'll Kenny from the other boat who's just helping world's us all the time world's favorite Canadian to yeah, come exactly. around tomorrow and we'll smash out the first yeah. phase of the job in like a day and that's like, I think, four days after we're like, hey, we should really replace our rigging. And it's like, okay, so that's almost done. Winning! Winning! And we did conveniently uh, park our dinghy outside a bar. So, you know, we're just smashing through the chores. Well, we practically we might... made money. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, it's not the best day for it, but it's as good as we're going to get this week, so no point wasting any more time. Alright, let's go. Are you really sure you want to go up in 22 knots? Yep. He really wants to get this Might job done. Might have to do this one day. Might have to do this at sea one day, so what's the point in only doing it on nice days before that? This is true. Very valid. May have to go up there in 40 knots at sea one day. But to be fair, rain is coming, so you sure you want to do 22 and rain? Oh, we better hurry up then, eh? Oh my god, no pressure. Alright, he's our first spreaders. Only one more spreader to go. Oh my god, I wish I'd just feel that. My hat just blew off. It started raining. I had to go in the dinghy and go get my hat. Meanwhile, Adam's floating up the mast. Still stuck up there. I should probably try and get him up again. Whew. Okay. 
Alright, you okay? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. Oh, I look like a mad crazy woman. Oh. Considering, considering I've had to do it three times this week, I should be less out of breath than this. Whew. Stupid hat. How was that? Oh, no, I'm really hot, huh? <laughs> what? That's pretty rolly. Not fun. Fantastic. Well done, baby. You deserve a beer tonight. <laughs> breakfast beers? <laughs> you may have a breakfast beer. <laughs> My ears were really hot. Oh, someone's talking about you. Maybe. And you know, it's all the people in the anchors below. Look at that clown up the mast. <laughs> in 25 <laughs> knots of wind. Join us next episode where we finish phase one of our rigging project. We attend the 2019 Heineken Regatta. We bag a few bargains at the local swap meet and Adam finally wins a battle with the watermaker. <laughs>